there. Welcome to Yep, yeah, I Made a Thing. Today's thing is a Cornish pasty and I'm going to film it in two sections. You've got the first section which is the rough puff pastry and the second is assembling, crimping and the baking times of the actual pasty itself. You'll need a pen and a piece of paper. I'm going to tell you the ingredients for the pastry. I'm actually doing double the quantity so when I'm when I've got everything out on the surface, you're not going to have that much quantity if you go by the recipe that I give you. So to start off with, the flour, most recipes will give you plain flour in the recipe, but for pasties, I recommend, it's what I use, a bread flour, a strong flour. And this is because when you're crimping and you're pulling your pastry, you want it to have some stretch. So we're going to use bread flour and you're going to have 225 grams, which is eight ounces. And your fat is half lard to half butter. So your, your quantity is going to be 150 grams total fat. So that's 75 grams of lard and 75 grams of butter. So that's five ounces combined. You're going to have a pinch of salt and a quantity of water. The difficulty with the water quantity is that different flours absorb different amounts of water. So you go by consistency rather than quantity. So when you've got your flat, your pastry out on your board, you don't want it sticky. You don't want it crumbly, but hopefully I'll be able to show you how, how you need it. I mean, obviously you can add a little bit of water, but it gets your surface all messy. And something else that is handy to have is one of these pastry blenders. It's basically, I don't know if you can see it, it's basically five blades. Because when you're making rough puff pastry, what you want to end up with is little pieces, about pea-sized of fat in your flour. So you can do it with a knife, but it's rather laborious. So I've got my um, fats here, my butter and my lard, and I'm going to use this pastry blender to blend them all together. And all you're doing is you're just really pushing the fat into the flour until you get to the consistency where you've got like little bits of, little bits of lumps of fat. As I said, about pea size. I've got my knife and I'll just clear off the blender so that once I get through, I keep turning my bowl, and the pushing the fat into the flour, I be difficult. I could do with an overhead camera, really. So I could do with a, a producer and a director. I take it as a compliment that I've been asked for the recipes. There we go. That's nearly done. If you can imagine doing that with a knife, or even if you were cutting it up with a knife on a plate or in a dish with a view to just stirring it into your flour, you, it would start melting in your hands. And the trouble is you want your fat as cold as possible. So don't have it sitting around in the room. You actually need to take it out of the fridge just before you use it. And the same with the water. You want, when you're doing pastry, you want everything as cool as possible. So there we are, that's that done. And I've got a nice, consistency there. Away. I don't know whether you can whether you can actually see that. So I've got some lumps of fat. It's not like when you're doing short crust and you do it into crumbs. I've already put my salt in there so that's all nicely mixed in. So now I've got my water here, my, my chilled water. I've got just over a cup there I might not need all that, I'll try it and see how I go. But I'm making a well in the centre. And I'll put in half. And then with a knife, mix it all together. So the centre, centre is all coming together. But I can see that that's not going to take all of this dry stuff around the outside. So I'm going to add a little bit more. As you do this, you tend to 
better feel for it because you don't want it so dry that it's going to actually crack while you're using it. And you don't want it so wet that it's going to stick too much to your hands. So I've got nearly that cup gone now. So let's see if I can show you. I've got some dry at the bottom, but I think if I put that out onto the work surface now, this is not overly wet. So I'll just flour my surface and take out all of the pastry that's joined together. Yeah, and I'll just put the tiny little drip of water in on the, the dry and that's going to pull that together and then I can put that out on, I'll put the crumbs in as well onto the surface. Right now I'm going to pull that together. You're not actually kneading it you're just pulling the pastry together because you don't want at this stage for all the fat to get too incorporated because that's going to happen with the rolling. So all I've done is just brought all the pieces together. These odd bits here will go into the pastry as I'm rolling. So your first stage of rolling, you've got your lump. I will put a little bit of flour on there. So you've got your lump of pastry. How appetizing. As I said, uh, this is double the quantity to the recipe I've given you. So I'm going to roll it out. And I don't know if I put that up, whether you can see that now we get mar getting marbling of the, the fat. So we're going to roll it out. It doesn't have to be too thin. And then we're going to turn it up into thirds. So there's your first turn. And you're going to actually turn your pastry around so you're going to roll it out in the separate direction. So we'll take that. And I'm going to place all that in there. And you're going to roll out again. Next time I go down to Cornwall, they'll probably close the tamer on me because I'm telling everyone this, but I think if it's good enough for Mary Berry and for Paul Hollywood to put Cornish pasties in their recipe, it's good enough for me. So to stop it sticking, I can feel it's getting a little bit damp on the bottom. So I folded it into thirds again, turned it around. I've got my join down this side. I'm going to roll it out again. This is the third rolling. I was never actually given quantities for this recipe. Back in the 80s, I used to go round to a lovely lady's house who had all the family round on a Wednesday for lunch, children, grandchildren, and she used to make us all pasties. And I used to go round in the morning and I'd sit and watch her making these pasties thinking I'll get there one day. And thankfully I have. So that's my third roll and my third fold. That's it. You're going to leave your pastry like that. You're going to put it on a plate, join down. Now this is really important. She did that every time. Three taps, one in the middle and one either side. That's a hazel tap. So there we are, rough puff pastry to go in the fridge. I normally make it overnight. I make the pastry in the evening and then make the pasties in the morning so it's nice and rested. So I'll cover that with cling film and I'll be back. What's the time? It's just before lunch. So we'll be having these at tea time. So I'll be back, I should think about three o'clock. So that's going to give it three or four hours to rest. Because you've got the strong pastry, you need this um, resting time. Okay then. Thank you very much and I'll see you in three hours.